A positive attitude is like a chicken and egg thing. If you're successful, you're positive. If you're positive, you're successful, which comes first. It doesn't really matter. Positive thinkers are men and women who accomplish an awful lot more than people who have negative mental attitudes. Your job is to become thoroughly positive and constructive towards yourself, your possibilities, the world around you, and the people in your life. The way you do this is very much the same way you develop physical fitness. We know that you can't see the results of mental fitness in the same way you can see physical fitness, but you can see the results of it. Mental fitness comes from following a specific exercise program, doing things in a certain way every single day. It's much easier than going to a gym and sweating and working out. So I'm gonna ask you to do this for me. I'm gonna give you seven steps, seven things that you can do, seven things that have been proven to work. What I'm gonna ask you to do is practice these seven steps for 20, one days. The reason for this is that it takes 21 days to develop a new habit pattern of any kind. If you work on a habit pattern and practice it every day, you begin to develop new neural grooves in your brain that cause you to think and act more optimistically automatically. You wake up in the morning feeling better, more positive toward the challenges you face during the day. You become more optimistic in the face of adversity. You start to become a more confident and optimistic person. When you do, you'll find your whole life opening up around you like sunshine on a bright morning. This is the great rule of success. Number one is positive self-talk. Positive self-talk has been getting very good press in the last little while. Positive self-talk means that you talk to yourself and make sure that your thoughts are on what you want and off of the things that you don't want. Successful people, positive people, are people who explain things to themselves in a positive way. They say, well, that's an interesting situation or that'll work out okay or don't worry about it. The second part of positive self-talk is to control your inner dialogue, to control what's happening inside you and to be aware that the average person if they're not careful, will have a tendency to be negative. Remember, 95% of your feelings are determined by the way you talk to yourself. It's absolutely essential that you talk to yourself the way that you want to be outside, what you see in your relationships. Your health, your work, your customers, and so on tend to be a result of the pictures you have inside. If you see yourself and think about yourself as an extraordinary person, if you see yourself as a success, if you see yourself as happy and positive, confident and in control, if you see yourself as a loving parent or spouse, you will act that way toward others. Your subconscious mind controls your reticular activating system or your reticular cortex as well. If you interview successful people, it's a very interesting thing. If you interview successful people and you ask them on a regular basis, what do you think about? What are you thinking about now? You find that successful people are always thinking constructive, positive, creative thoughts that help them to be more successful. Now, if you think about positive, constructive, success-oriented, happy things, you start to have more of those in your life. The fourth part of mental programming the fourth part is positive people. We have a tendency to adopt the words, the actions, the behaviors, the mannerisms, the dress we associate with most of the time if we're not very careful. Get away from negative people, get around positive people, associate with winners in your life. The fifth part is positive training and development. Most of your success is gonna come from other people. Most of your success is gonna come from someone who helps you and people like to help other people who are good at what they do and who are pleasant and easy to get along with. Wait an hour a day, 30 to 60 minutes every day will make you one of the greatest authorities in your field in a couple of years. Listen to educational and uplifting audio cassettes in your car. When all knowledge and skills are becoming obsolete, it's the ability to learn new things at a rapid rate. So dedicate yourself to lifelong continuous personal improvement. Number six is positive health habits. First of all, eat lots of fruits, lots of vegetables, lots of whole grain products. Second of all, stop eating fats, sugars, and salts. Third of all, drink lots of water. And fourth of all, get lots of exercise. Walk, head on to an aerobic exercise program. Regular rest and recreation are absolutely critical to having high levels of physical energy, which gives you the optimism and confidence to be able to bounce when you face the adversities of daily life rather than breaking. The seventh key to mental fitness. We call this a sense of urgency. There are many qualities that you can develop to be successful, 
but a sense of urgency is possessed by less than 2% of the population. These are the people who are almost magnets for opportunities. I had to change my thinking. I had to change my philosophy. I'm telling you, my life exploded into change. My bank account changed immediately. My income changed immediately with a little consideration of the refinement of your sale by setting a better sale. Refining your philosophy, your whole life can start to change from the day on. You don't have to wait till tomorrow. You don't have to wait till next month to start this whole process immediately. Now some people do so little thinking they don't even have their sale up. Now is the chance to change. Number one is velocity, my personal opinion, each person's personal philosophy. Here's the definition of success and failure. Sometimes the first year you say, well, you know, I'm so healthy now. What difference is it going to make? You've got to be smarter than that. Just because disaster doesn't fall on us at the end of the first day doesn't mean disaster isn't coming. You've got to be so smart that you look down the road and say, well, the errors in my present judgment of philosophy, what's that going to cost me in one year, six years, one month, six months? I'm telling you, the money cost and the health cost and the success cost is too gigantic if you look down the road a little ways and say, are there errors in my current judgment? Like an apple versus a Hershey bar, is that just a good illustration of some of the rest of my errors in judgment? If it is, that's where I found myself at age 25. At the end of the first six years of my economic life, I've got pennies in my pocket, I've got nothing in the bank. The creditors are calling saying, hey, you told us the check was in the mail. I'm embarrassed. I'm behind on my promise. I used to think it was the community that was messed up and the country was messed up. The government was messed up. Then I found out what was really messed up was my own personal philosophy. My own errors in judgment in my own personal philosophy brought me in six years, pennies in my pocket, nothing in the bank, and trying to explain why I wasn't doing well living in America as a 25-year-old American male with a family. Every reason to do well. Here's the formula for failure. Errors in judgment being lax about developing your own personal philosophy. Come on now, let me give you the secret to success. The formula for failure. A few errors in judgment repeated every day for one month starts the weakness, starts the disaster process. You can imagine what happened. Now, here's the formula for success. A few simple disciplined practices every day and you've started the whole new process called a whole new life. A few simple disciplines practiced every day. It's not only with your health habits, but with your money habits and with your communication habits, with your sales habits, management habits, and every other habit that you've got. If you'll start that process, eliminate the errors, and replace it with discipline practice, you can start this process of life change immediately after today. You don't ever have to be the same again. You don't have to start with something staggering. What if you should be walking around the block for your good health and you don't? What will that do in six years? I'm telling you, the word is disaster. You could and you should and you don't. Here's an even stronger word. You won't. I mean, don't might mean you're careless, won't probably means you're stubborn, and either one's called disaster. Now, how do you change all that the next six years? By the time I'm 31, I'm a millionaire. How about that? Well, strangely enough, during that second six years of my economic life, the economy was about the same and prices were about the same, and everything else was about the same, circumstances were about the same, then how come I got rich? How come I totally changed my life? I was not the same. I started with my philosophy, I started mending my errors by doing some better thinking, changing my mind, coming up with ideas that I didn't have before I met my teacher. And once that whole process started for me, I'm telling you, I changed my whole life within a six year period. I was never the same, and I've kept up that process all these years. Your philosophy is going to determine whether or not you go for the disciplines or continue the errors. That's called potential. Everybody has it within their vow. Guy didn't say, hey, as simple as an apple a day, as simple as a walk around the block. Why not start right there? If you don't start there, where else are you gonna start? Might as well start where it's easy, then go to the more complicated, because you can't handle the complicated, the simple disciplines. How can you handle the complicated? Thank you. Hold on. Here's number two. Number one, we're affected by philosophy. First major of the five major pieces. Number two is attitude. We're affected by how we feel. 
First, we're affected by what we know, decisions we make. Second, we're affected by attitude, how we feel. It's how you feel about the past. Got to have a good attitude about the past. Let the past be a schoolmaster to teach you not to threaten you, but to teach you. Next, it's how you feel about the future, goal setting, the promise of the future is an awesome affect on your life every day. Without a future well designed, we take hesitant steps. You know, do you have to have hesitant steps for six years? You can have driven into a corner, not boldly willing to go and take your portion, take your share. Next, it's how you feel about everybody else. You've got to have a good attitude about everybody else because it takes everybody else to make a market. And here's the last one, that's how you feel about yourself. Understanding self-worth is the beginning. Self-worth should be easy. If one of us can do it, all of us can. If anybody can think it, we all think it. I can read, you can read, I can understand, you can understand. From where I came from, a few simple things, I didn't try revolutionize my life in five years. Is there anybody here that can't do it? Change from pennies to fortune? Change from batting to something? Change from broke to rich? That's the attitude about yourself, so valuable. Okay, now in transforming our lives, we don't start with attitude, we don't start with inspiration, we start with education. Life change starts with education. You've gotta be educated to the point of where you might have messed up. And all you've gotta do is write down through the list. You don't need some teacher to come by and tell you, be your own best teacher saying, hey, let me make a list of some places I've messed up. Because if you let this down, let this down, that probably affects the rest. And the answer is, that's true. So we don't start with inspiration, we start with education. What's the first education? If it isn't going well and you live in America, you have foreign countries, you say, well, the country's messed up. That's like cursing the soil and cursing the seed and the sunshine and the rain, which is all you've got. Don't curse the soil. You get your own planet. You can rearrange this whole deal. This one, you've got to take like it comes. So number two is attitude. Here was number three, activity. This is the work part, the labor part, taking action. The activity is the miracle working piece. Miracle being something we don't quite understand how it works. Doesn't mean it doesn't work if you're willing to straighten it out. Here's one of the keys. It's called activity. It's called disciplines. Turning wisdom from your philosophy and inspiration, strengthening of attitude and faith, courage, commitment, all this stuff that comes from attitude, if you're willing to take these two qualities, philosophy and attitude, and invest them into activity, you can have a miracle. Anything short of that, no miracle. Wisdom doesn't perform a miracle. Attitude doesn't perform a miracle. The only thing that performs a miracle of increase is called equity. It's called putting wisdom and attitude into disciplined labor. This labor now can perform a miracle. And here are the two parts of the labor. One, do what you can. Number two, do the best you can. Can't give you better advice than that. Number one, do what you can. You just gotta go home and make a list after today. And here's the question to ask as you make this personal list. What am I not doing that would be easy to do that could greatly change my health? My wealth, what am I not doing? I'm neglecting it. Would be easy to do if you'll take care of your part. Call putting it into activity. Action works miracles, but here's how you get a miracle going for your life. Number one, do what you can. Get a list of the stuff you could do and you haven't done, postpone, and start cleaning that up. You can't start at a better place for personal change. It'll affect your bank account, affect your future, affect your income, affect everything. You can't start a better life change process than cleaning up what you should be doing. The man says, well, my mother lives down in Florida. I should have written her six months ago. I just can't seem to get that letter written. I'm asking you to get that letter in. Clean that up and don't walk like other people walk. Don't postpone like other people postpone. You say, well, is it as simple as writing a letter? And the answer is yes. Where else would you start for life change, personal change? You don't need a big package to fall out of the sky. You don't need massive bombardment pre-conscious, subconscious practice channeling, find a 2,000 year old guru. I mean, you don't need any of that stuff. Pass on all that, kids are afraid of that stuff. Too much of it, 
You'll be out on a limb with Shirley. I mean, no, pass on all this stuff. This stuff's too easy. This stuff's too simple. It's called taking action. Number one, correct neglect, correct errors in discipline. Number two, start setting up some disciplines. And if you'll do that, you'll perform a miracle. Now here's the second part of the miracle. Number one is do what you can. Here's number two, do the best you can. If that's not your philosophy, I would have to do amend it. A guy slips in late, company doesn't seem to mind, slips out early, first one in the parking lot heading for happy hour, stretches his break, comes early for lunch, late back from lunch. Company doesn't seem to notice. Guy says, best as I can calculate, I'm putting in about a half a day's work and I'm collecting a full day's pay. And the guy says, I got it made. Little does he know the seeds of his own disaster are already being sown by the weakness of his own personal philosophy. It's not the economy that's gonna determine your next six years. It's your philosophy about labor, about activity, about miracle, about soil and seed, sunshine and rain, the economy, the banks, the money, the companies, the schools, and what's going on. It's your philosophy and your attitude and then your ability to take action. All of that we call the process of life change miracle working. Here was number four. Results. Every once in a while you've got to take a measure to see how you're doing with these three pieces. Philosophy, attitude, activity. Now we take a measure called results. What are the results at the end of the day? The results at the end of the week. You can't let too much time go by without checking. When time goes by six years, I've been out there working. When I met my teacher, Mr. Schof, he said, well, Mr. Ron, let's just go through a little summary here. He said, in the last six years, how much money have you saved and invested? Let's go through a little tab list here. How much money have you saved and invested in the last six years? I said, what? Zero. He said, you have messed up. You remember these notes. I like that. Messed up. He said, who sold you on that plan? I thought, my gosh, the man's right. I'm a nice guy. I bought the wrong plan. What if you were 50 and broke? Right. Didn't need to change countries. Bought the wrong plan. What a sad scenario that would be. Shof said, these questions, let's go through some results. He said, how many books have you read in the last 90 days? I said, what? Zero. Wisdom of the world available. Change your life. Change your future. Wisdom of the world available. Develop any skill you want. Earn the kind of income you want. Have all the treasures you want. Equities you want. Relationships with your family that you want. Everything that you want available and the wisdom of the world to help you get it. Haven't read any books in the last 90 days? My teacher said, Mr. Ron, you have messed up. I'm telling you, you've got the deal. Shof said, Mr. Ron, in the last six months, how many classes have you taken to improve your skills or to develop new skills? Go for the American dream. Become rich and powerful and sophisticated and healthy and influential. How many classes have you taken in the last six months? I said, how many? Zero. He said, you have messed up. Said, you don't need to unmess the country. You don't need to straighten out the perplexed. You don't need to straighten out any of this stuff. All you've got to do is look within and let results teach you a great deal about your own activity, your own attitude, and your own philosophy. I went through that process. Here's all life asks us to do. Make measurable progress in reasonable time. Some things you've got to check every day, some things you've got to check at least by the end of the week. A salesman joins us at a little sales company supposed to make 10 calls the first week. Wouldn't it be legitimate calling in on Friday and say, John, how many calls? I mean, this stuff is simple. John says, well, say John, well, won't fit in this little box here. Well, now John starts with a story. You say, John, I made this little box so small, so a story won't fit. I don't need a story. I need what? A number. What will a number tell me? Everything. John's supposed to make 10 calls. What if he made 20? You'd say, wow. What if he only made one call? Will that tell us something about John's philosophy? And the answer is yes. Will it tell us something about his attitude? Of course. Will it tell us something about his disciplines? Of course. And if he wants a lesson in life change, all he has to do is be willing to face the numbers and come up with the results. 
that will teach you to either celebrate if you've got good results or fix whatever needs to be fixed in your philosophy, attitude, and activity called disciplines. You don't need to go anywhere else. I do believe in affirmations. Now, if you need a little additional affirmation, you just put up there, I'm 40 and broke. I mean, you know, that ought to do it. And if you need just a little more, put up there, I live in America and I'm 40 and broke. That's enough to turn your life around. It says, hey, something is wrong somewhere. I have messed up. And I'm telling you, if you'll start with that, it's called the process of life change. And it doesn't matter how small the process is to start. One discipline starts it, and then one discipline feeds another, feeds another, and the first thing you know, you've got this whole cycle in an upward, positive motion. It's called life change, called income change, it's called health change, relationship with your family change. Equity is unprecedented that you can have in numbers that will stagger the imagination if you do not curse what's available and start amending what's possible to get the results that you want. Anybody can do this stuff. Results are the name of the game. Success is a numbers game. Good note to me said that it's a numbers game. You've got to go for the number. You've got to understand what the numbers are.